Hey guys, welcome back to the Small Town Critics Podcast. I'm one third of the Small Town Critics. My name is Mo. No, I'm you. And guys, we are here for the Colour Purple Review. It's time for you to see the world. There's going to be some changes made. Put it on. This ain't me. Hush. We need to look like we belong. Let's see the smile and colour. Uh, before we get into that review, just want to let you guys know that you can, you can like and you can comment and you can subscribe. Uh, you can do these things and they're for free, you know, just so you might as well. Uh, follow us on socials, they're in the description below. And hit the bell also so you know when the uploads are coming out, uh, we greatly appreciate it. Yeah. Hashi, the colour purple. Yep. I need to get the director's name because, oh man, I should have been prepared. He's a Hashi, rapper. man, you got to keep me on point so I'm, I'm, sorry, so I'm, so I'm, you know what I mean? I know he's a former rapper. I know that. Oh, really? I forgot his name though. I didn't know that. I watched this film a while ago. Um, this version? This version. Yes. You watched it a while ago, is yeah. it? I also prepare, I watched the original again, which again, I remember what the first time I watched it, I didn't really like it. Okay. I might butcher this name, so I apologize. Uh, Ghanaian director Blitz Bazwuli. Yes. Yeah? yeah. Directed The Color Purple. Um, and Steven Spielberg, obviously, as we know, he directed the original version. Yes, of he's the the producer Color here as well as Oprah Winfrey. Producer here. The less we talk about Oprah, the better. Um, but <laughs> uh, this movie stars Fantasia. Yes. Taraji P. Henson. Yeah. Um, Danielle Brooks and Coleman Domingo, amongst other people. Yes. Uh, but they were kind of the mains of the movie, yeah. I guess. Uh, quick, quick, quick non-spoilers. Yeah. What do you think, Hash? Wasn't for me. Yeah. Wasn't for me. The original wasn't for me. <laughs> um... And the reason being is because the original tried to be very kind of like uh, soft with the subject subject matter, where it's a very, very, very hard story and a very, very like brutal story in many ways. You don't think this one tried to be more softer? Not really, because again, it's 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 a very, very traumatic subject matter. The, yeah, the, this movie is dealing with and stuff like that. And the reason, I thought the older one hit it harder, no? No, I don't think so. Is it okay? Yeah. Um, but this film, and I, again, I just felt like it depicted the kind of the uh, like the, the male black character or, or or just black male characters in general as in a very very negative way to a point where it really, in many ways, to me, it was very very demeaning kind of thing. If, if I'm being honest with you, okay. Um, there's no real redeeming characters, you know what I mean? Like redeeming, like like redeeming kind of like characteristics for Mister, so to speak. They tried. Of. They they tried, but was, you know what I mean? They didn't try hard enough. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I felt like it was more of a victim story than anything else. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I which felt, which fair enough? Yeah. Which fair and enough? I felt like what was the advantage of the film was the musical aspects because it really raised it up, and you can because initially when you once you read the book. And you see the original film, you're thinking, how can this possibly be a musical? Mm. But it's done really, really well. And then there's so many other factors outside of the movie which paint this in such a bad way. Like the way Taraji P. Henson was treated and the lack of, of like financial kind of inanimate compensation and remuneration for her, 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 her work in this film, stuff like hey, that. Hey, a lot of people think that's the reason there wasn't many Oscar noms, but I ain't saying it is. Listen, that could be that could be reason. But again, the movie does what the advantage of this movie is the musical aspect because they have so, so much talent. Fantasia, Daniel, you know what I mean? Like so much talent. But I think the way the characters are depicted, the way the story at many points meanders and stuff like that, and it goes all over the place. It's in Africa, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like characters are kind of like become the quasi, for want of a better expression, the magical Negro in a way, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I, I really, I really, really didn't like this Not film. for you at It all. wasn't a, at all for me, yeah. honestly. And I just felt like when you see a film like created by, by, your, by people that look like you, for you, like you want to, it to be a fair representation of what the experience would be, especially at that time. You know what I'm saying? I if feel like those kinds of things would happen though. I feel like there's a bunch of misters in that time. You think so? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Abuse can happen anywhere. Do you know what I mean? Can, abuse can happen anywhere, but I just felt like it, the the character w was shown to be someone who was like very, very like opportunistic. He was a very pred predatory kind of thing, stuff like yeah. that. 
and just using using you know what I mean yeah <laughs> yeah. certain characters and stuff like that and also we have to understand too he got all of this from his father oh mister yeah he was the same way and also at the same time he's trying to please him as much as he can he's so scared of him and he can't stand up to him and things like that so yeah no I don't know like but let me let me quickly concentrate on the positive aspects like the certain yeah please the yeah, certain yeah, yeah musical uh, numbers and stuff like that they were great which were fantastic choreography like, great which were fantastic yeah but then certain parts of filmmaking were weren't really showing the full extent like why am I getting so many close ups in a dance number it makes no sense I want I want it to be wide I want it to be like a and I mean, a Powell and, and, and Pressburger mm. kind of musical number where I, I see all the moving parts, mm. all the colours, stuff like that. And so that's a cinematography issue for you. Yeah. And yeah. but again, like you, because obviously you spoke about this uh, um, off, uh, off camera, the costume and stuff like that, the colours, so cool. You want to see more of that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So there are certain things that which re worked really well. And Fantasia, Daniela, you know what I mean? Yeah. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Incredible. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. But the overall story and the way it was depicted and the route into the story, similar to the original, didn't work for me. And mm. I just felt like, like it could have been done so well, so so much better. And also, it could have been a way more balanced telling of the story. If that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I hear so you. That's me. What about you, brother? I mean, <laughs> I wasn't like blown away with this movie or anything like that. I was blown away with some of the musical numbers, though, because like. Just Fantasia in general, like she's a fantastic oh, singer. Do you know what I mean? Like, and she killed it. Is there been a surge of musicals lately, or am I going crazy? Uh, I think probably in the last like ten years. There has, right? Yeah. I'd okay, so. I thought I was going crazy because I feel like every like every they're trying to bring back the old like kind of fifties, forties. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I feel like every so often I'm watching a musical again. Do you know what I mean? It's just it's a, it's, it's a bit crazy. I mean, I don't mind it, but it's mm. what it is. But um, yeah, the musical numbers were great, like you said. Um, in terms of fair representation, I mean, I do believe there were people like that at that time that were just controlling and predatory, like you said. So mm. I understand it. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you're saying that because you just don't like to see your people in that way. I yeah. don't know. Again, and maybe you've seen too many stories from that time that are just so, you know, they, one they, note. They're, and they're also, they're heavy. And maybe you're just tired of it as well. Because some people are tired. Some people are just like, I don't want to see another slave movie. I'm kind of done with yeah, that. You, you, already, I mean? you already heard about my thing where like, I, I watched Amistad when I was in year eight. Mm. And I wrote like 5,000 word mm. essay mm. as part of my book report for it. So my, like my report for it, sorry, at school. And I think at the end I said, I'm never going to watch another slave movie again. Mm. Never did. And I broke my rule for Quentin Tarantino's Django Unchained. And I was so happy I did that because it had a happy ending. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I understand. So, you. and again, I'm, you're talking to a man who hasn't watched 12 Years a Slave and stuff like that. Yeah, I ain't watched it either. So, and I, and I don't want to because I've seen some to. scenes in it. And I, and I don't want to feel those feelings. Yeah, you know same, 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 same. So, but, it could be that. It could be that. Yeah, so. like, but also I have to say, like, they can't all be happy endings. Do you know what I mean? But it's fair for you to also say, I don't want to go through that and watch that. It's you true. know what I mean? Even though, like, we never lived through that time yeah. and stuff like that. But, but I can I can separate myself as a critic and say there's many aspects of the film which were successful. Mm -hmm, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. there's many kind of character characterizations and performances which were really great. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like were really affecting. Mm -hmm. And like because there's certain people in my screening that were clapping at the end of certain kind of music. Oh, same, and same. Stuff like that. Bro, I had like ten people in my screening. All of them were clapping. Bro, because it, it's it's that good. Yeah. So you have to give it. You know what I mean? You have to give it its flowers. Yeah. In many, many 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 ways. Yeah. But I just feel like like people that look like us who are in the industry should be really thinking about the way not only they are making their films but also the way they are marketing it the way they are looking after people because obviously the the main through line for the marketing and, and and what's come up like in terms of like people talking about this film like, outside of the actual making and stuff like that is the way Charles P. Henson has been treated yeah and the fact she hasn't been paid basically yeah like, fairly and stuff like that yeah so that kind of like Obviously, it's not something I should consider while watching a film, mm. but it's something in the back of my mind. Because, mm. like, I'm a human being and I, and I care about people, you know what I mean? Yeah. And especially people that, you know what I mean, have a similar experience of life that I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's difficult. It's very, very difficult. I hear you. And, obviously, it's not the, the greatest musical I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. But, it had certain, like, things that really worked well. And obviously things I've already mentioned that haven't worked well. Mm. But for you, what worked really well? What, what, what did you like? Um, what did you think could have been better? For me, obviously... 
personally, I need to feel something when it comes to movies, isn't yeah. it? And Mr. Oh my goodness, I hated him. Oh my God, Coleman Domingo played that character. Just from the beginning, when he's following Halle Bailey's character home, just like, get this man out of here. Get this man out of here. Oh my days. And then he comes and asks for her hand. And we spoke about this in American Fiction a little bit, but the colorism aspect of like... Um, uh, N N Nettie yeah. Nettie's dad saying hey, you don't want her you want her the ugly one and this and that and she was the darker skinned one uh, Seely and things like that and the, it's just there's so many layers in my opinion and like yeah it just it just it made me feel what I feel like the movie was supposed to make me feel at the end of the day do you know yeah. what I mean and you f you just felt for Seely and I just want to say one thing that worked well for me in terms of cinematography yeah. is seeing Seely grow up and that transition of her coming from one room to the other where she's sewing, and now it's Fantasia's character. I thought that was smooth as hell, man. I was like, woo, that was nice cinematography. But, um, what about yeah. the end when she's Sierra? <laughs> she didn't have much to do, but she was fine for what it was, didn't it? She didn't, she didn't really have much to do in it. I laughed in that. You're finished. I was like, right. okay. <laughs> But I gotta say, Halle Bailey's great, you know. She's great. Yeah. She's great. Like she had the Little Mermaid role, and now she's um young. She's so talented. Yeah, she's this young Nettie in this, so and good, her voice is amazing. And yeah, now she was amazing, and young Celia as well. Yeah, who was fantastic as well. I yeah. thought it was so cool when she wearing the yellow dress and the dancing on the beach. Yeah, and you see that skin tone, yeah. like juxtaposed by the color. Of the, yeah, yeah. That's, that's pretty. That's cool stuff, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, cool. yeah. that's great filmmaking. It's so interesting. We just reviewed American Fiction and. Talking about slave so, movies and stuff, and then we're talking about this yeah, now. It's and, yeah, it's, it's a bit crazy. But um, yeah, Mister was despicable, man. And that, that um, I, I, I haven't seen the original. I know that might be blasphemous. It's fine. I, it's, I know, I know, it's, I, I know it's fine for you. <laughs> but I ain't seen the original, right? I wanted to ask you: Is this beat without the musical numbers? Is this beat for beat the same movie? It's quite similar. Yes. It's quite similar. Okay, because I saw comments where it's like. For example, the, we're in spoiler territory now, by the way, guys. Yeah. So watch the Colour Purple if you need to and you don't want to be spoiled. But there's a, there's a dinner scene where Celie finally stands up to Mr. And I heard in the original that's more fleshed out and it's more, like, it gives you more you have, you of a have feeling. A great, you have a great director in Steven Spielberg. Really, he really, like, prides himself on taking his time with scenes like that, mm. like around the table and stuff like that. Because those kind of scenes, like, on a technical level, it takes so long to film because of so many different setups in it, in terms of like camera locations yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, and it definitely is. And you, it, there's definitely more catharsis that you feel from that performance compared to this one. Yeah, and another scene where, um, where we have to we have to take some time to talk about Daniel Brooks um, as Sophia, where she punches the the mayor. I think it was. Yeah, <laughs> she actually punched the mayor. But um, apparently in the original, that scene is a bit more, it has a bit more oomph to it, if that makes sense. Yeah. I can't really speak on it because I haven't seen the original, but yeah. I wanted to see if you thought it's it's one, of, it's, it's one of the things where a lot of the kind of similar scenes, you could like really see the differences in di direction. Because I think I think the director for this film, uh, uh, Blitz, Blitz. He, Blitz, he's, uh, I think it, it, it could be his first like f full feature length film, I think. It is the fifth. Fifth, okay. Yeah. Fifth, but yeah. you can see the difference between him and Steven Spielberg in many aspects. Or fourth, but yeah, yeah, and I hear you. Um, fairly and unfairly. Sure. Um, oh, that scene got me so angry, though, man. When the the the, the mayor's wife, whatever, say, "Oh, what did she?" Say? <laughs> She's like, "That's your children. They so chocolatey and clean and this and that." I was like, "Oh my days!" And she was trying to be polite, like, "No, thank you," in the beginning, and then she's like, "Hell no." Do you, do you see how the stuff upsets me? Yeah, you and then, it? of course, they had the audacity to get angry at her answer. And imagine as a husband, not being able to do anything. You just have to go. You just have to get out of there. It's like, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, I, I get why it's upsetting, honestly. It is messed up. But Danielle Brooks, though, she acted those scenes out incredibly. The prison scene, oh. when she's saying to Celie, don't leave me. And um, the scene on the dinner table... <laughs> where she said, Celie said, you, you look like an old sack of horse shit or something like that. She just started laughing and then her laugh went into a cry and then 
she was back and she was just like, yeah, don't worry, I'll, I'll deal with Mister and all of this stuff. And yeah, man, I don't know. There, there was, there was, there was, there was great parts to this film. What do you think of the ending? Parts that I didn't really care about. The ending, <laughs> it's a bit cheesy. <laughs> It's a bit cheesy and um, cringy a little oh, bit. Is, um, yeah. I did feel an emotional hit though when Nettie finally came back and mm. they hugged and she saw her children finally. Because I don't know, you kind of have to try and put yourself in their shoes and be like, yeah. I haven't seen my children or been able to be with them since I was a little girl, right? And they've gone through this whole journey. They got married. They have grandchildren. And now I finally get to see you. And it's the same with Nettie. Like, I haven't seen you since we were little girls. And now yeah. I finally get to see you. And that part hit me. But then when they started singing, they were like, <laughs> and all of that stuff. Yeah. I was like, Ugh. I don't know. Sign up by it. Just like I, I said. I have to admit, though, I think the last hour is a lot more successful than the, everything preceding it. I thought, because even though it was a bit cheesy. I feel you. Because it, there was a kind of emotional build up. Yeah. Kind of thing. There was a song where um, I think after. Mr. Came to buy those pants yeah. where he was trying to crawl back to her like a dog. And I was like, I'm glad you just told him, just yeah, let's just be friends. I felt, I felt like. Although she could have, she should have kicked him out. She had every right to. Obviously, some of the performances were really incredible. But I think Coleman Domingo, obviously, he's gonna, he's like looking really good to like in terms of like Oscar nominations, stuff like that. Oh, yeah, and he's in there. He's in there, like he's for best actor, but not mm. for best supporting in this role as Mr. Which is interesting. I'm saying, I thought, has... I thought this, was more, this was a better performance than, than Rustin. Listen, in my opinion. there's this, bro, I know we had kind of a talk about this off camera. This movie should get more Oscar noms. I don't think it's a perfect movie, but there are some things where it's just kind of like, like Daniel Brooks getting an Oscar nomination for supporting actress, fantastic, great. Yeah, yeah. We just said there's a case for Common Domingo getting Best Supporting Actor um, nomination. This is just nominations we're talking about, not even yeah. saying they're winning. I think costume design, yes. there should be a nomination costume, for yeah. that. I think music, there should be a nomination for that. Like, best song. Best song, like, just to have, like, there's a song in there where um, Fantasia's in her fancy pants shop. Yeah. And I think it's like, I'm here, she's singing, or whatever it is. Yeah. Beautiful. I thought it was beautiful. Like, do you know what I mean? So. The fact that it only has an Oscar nomination for just Best Supporting Actress, I kind of think that's an injustice. But people right now, their focus is more on, oh my God, Margot Robbie, oh my God, Greta Gerwig, which is fair enough. But hey, come on, man. Let's also look at this too. You know like, we'll, we'll get into that on the, on the, on the Oscar episode. Yeah, we will yeah. get into anyway, that. Anyway, bro, um, you got anything else to say about it? Not really. I mean, I should probably watch the original, right? <laughs> Trying to put yourself through that, yeah, okay. Uh, Taraji was great, by the way. I love Taraji and everything she I love does. Again, Taraji, yeah, she's, Taraji's, Taraji's the best. Yeah, just pay her more, man. Exactly, man. Pay that she one. She is, like, if you look at it, like, she is one of the best actresses out there. Like, oh, without you know doubt. What I mean, so, yeah, she All deserves right, it. And real quickly, Coleman Domingo, what do you think about him being Kang? I'm with it. Yeah, I'm with it. That's not bad, right? When I heard it, I was like, "Yo, I can, I can, I can, I can work with that." That's not bad. Yeah. I mean, we'll see what happens with Jonathan Majors. Well, is he Kang anymore? He's not, right? No, no. And do you think Disney are gonna do a one eighty on that? Uh, on, on Mr. Carretta? No, <laughs> they might. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to say is Coleman Domingo. They just announced that he got the role for Joe Jackson in the Michael Jackson biopic. By the way, he's doing that, plus he's also going to direct and star as Nat King Cole. Bro, I don't think that that's what's crazy. I think what's crazy is doing Mr. and doing Joe Jackson is insane to me. Uh, he was, he's going to knock that out of the park. He's so... He's, uh, it's, it's he's crazy. going from one despicable man to another. Yeah. <laughs> that's going to be crazy. Yeah. Well, I actually can't wait for that. That's yeah. going to be incredible, I think. That yeah, is going to be interesting to see. Anyway, but, bros, um, hit me the STC score. STC score for me. Ay, ay, ay. You're going to end it. Oh, I have to think about rewatchability, things like that. What's good, what's bad about the movie. I have to think of, is it rewatchable? Is it not? Do you know what I mean? I have to take all of these things into consideration when I do my score. So I'm going to say 6.5 out of 10. 6. 6 out of 10? Yeah. Yeah. We've been pretty close on our scores today with all of yeah. these movies that we're reviewing. But yeah. You got anything else you want to say? Bro, I just... Again, I think you've, you've, you've changed my mind a lot with the American fiction conversation <laughs> as well as this yeah. in many ways. <laughs> But yeah. Do you know how hard that is to do, guys? Yeah. Oh my day, this man and his movie takes <laughs> stubborn. <laughs> but I'm glad you said that, though. That's good, man. Because we're here to. Exactly, man. You know what I'm saying? Converse and exchange of ideas. Exactly, exactly. All right, bro. Close us up. But yeah, guys, that was our review for The Color Purple. Uh, let us know what you guys think in the comments of the movie. Let us know, obviously, 
comparing the old one too if you've seen it um like comment subscribe hit the bell so you know when the uploads are coming out and we'll see you guys soon peace peace